Water. We drink it. We cook with it. We bathe in it. We grow plants and crops with it. We rely on water for everything we do. Water is essential for sustaining life and is one of the most important resources we have. Well, we are depleting our resource. We, it's it's uh, exploitation in the same sense that you would think of mineral exploitation. When it's gone, it will be gone. According to experts, recent climate changes and long-term drought conditions over the last decade have greatly decreased surface water flows in many regions of the United States. This is surface water. It's our streams, our lakes. It's the water that runs off the mountain ranges, that runs off of this land, collects in, in the stream. Uh, we take it out of our reservoirs, we take it out of our rivers. Groundwater is the water that I'm standing on. It's water below the surface. Um, it fills much of the pore space of this dirt below me. A recent scientific study from the Council for Agricultural Science and Technology investigates the diminishing water supplies across the country. The way California has addressed this problem is by creating a statewide infrastructure of dams and pipelines and canals that store winter water, snowmelt snow melt runoff, for use in the summer. We've built a conveyance structure around our river system, added many canals to it, like the Central Valley Project and the State Water Project, which brings water from Northern California to Central California and Southern California. Approximately 40% of the water withdrawn from surface and groundwater supplies in the U.S. is used for agricultural irrigation. Scientists predict that by the year 2050, the U.S. population will have increased by 25%. That means that a growing population will place a higher demand on water supplies as well as increase the demand for food production across the nation. So how will water consumption affect the way we feed our growing population? The groundwater in the Ogallala or the High Plains aquifer is uh, a predominant uh, source of water for agriculture, for cities, uh, industries, and other uses. According to Michael Jess, water pumped from the Ogallala Formation, or the High Plains Aquifer, as it is known, is widely used for crop irrigation. Nearly all the states uh, that overlie the Ogallala Formation have recorded uh, declines in the water table. As uh, water has been pumped for the last uh, 50 to 60 years, uh, the effect has been to lower the water table uh, simply because uh, more water has been extracted uh, than has uh, been replenished by natural forces. Alternatives for supplying water to the High Plains region are not abundant. Therefore, when discussion turns to the future, it is simply agreed that something needs to be done now to protect our nation's water resources for future generations. In effect, we're spending our inheritance. Uh, and we do need to be concerned about that, and I think we need to be concerned about it immediately. Uh, our paper has given the impression that the Ogallala is everywhere in the High Plains area. Uh, in some places it is absent, uh, and the irrigation supply in those locations comes from the flow of rivers. Uh, if those rivers uh, experience diminished flows, there will not be supplies for irrigated agriculture in those locations. In many of the western states, Long-term drought conditions have also decreased surface water flows significantly. Even the Colorado system, where salinity is a major concern, has reached 40-year lows in its reservoir levels. Arizona's booming population is placing higher demands on water as well. Urban consumption of water in semi-arid cities like Phoenix and Tucson has increased 20%. Tucson, for uh, many, many years, historically relied totally on groundwater for its water supply. And it's only been since the 1990s, the early 1990s, that it's made any use of surface supplies because the Central Arizona Project was built to transport Colorado River to Tucson. On the other hand, the Phoenix area has been making use of surface water supplies since the early 1900s. Um, so there are two cities in the same state, uh, desert cities, but actually have different water supply portfolios. University of Arizona professor and co-author of this CAS science paper, Dr. Sharon Megdal, says that Arizona faces challenges regarding water availability. There's a challenge in having people understand the importance of conservation 
when water is still relatively inexpensive. I think throughout the state, certainly in the metropolitan areas, we realize that we have to be constantly vigilant about our water supplies and about making sure we're prepared to serve the current and future populations of the state. California and Arizona are two of seven states sharing the Colorado River with Mexico. Water management of the Colorado River is unlike that of any other river in the nation. We're vulnerable to shortages on the Colorado River. And so we've actually done a lot of planning. We've done banking of water for the future. Florida, on the other hand, has more available groundwater and aquifers than any other state. In fact, Florida is home to 33 of the largest springs in the U.S., the aquifers supply drinking water to more than 90 percent of the state's population, with 54 percent consumed for agricultural purposes, 44 percent for urban and industrial uses. Lake Okeechobee is the second largest freshwater lake in the nation. The agricultural areas south of the lake, they rely entirely on Lake Okeechobee and the water that comes out of the lake and into the canals for irrigation. When you hear about Lake Okeechobee water level being low, it's an indicator that there's been less rainfall and the aquifers are down. The entire interconnected hydrologic system has been depleted, and so we need to wait for more rain. Here in Florida, major metropolitan cities such as Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, and Jacksonville rely exclusively on groundwater. Tampa is the only major city in the state that relies significantly on surface water resources. Tampa has moved away from groundwater in part because of the history they've had of lowering the water table from groundwater extraction and drying out of lakes and wetlands. And so Tampa has made an aggressive move to uh, use surface water in addition to groundwater. Many states have developed groundwater management plans, although laws and regulations vary by state and often by region within a state. I mean, kids that grow up in Tucson, Arizona, they don't ever see the Santa Cruz River because it disappeared 50 years ago, because it pumped the groundwater out and the river dried up. We've decided, uh, encoded in law, the protection of natural systems and that we've put a limit on how much water we're gonna withdraw from wetlands and from lakes and from streams. All these experts agree there is no substitute for water. Therefore, we should explore all possible water conservation solutions. Developing crops that will not use so much water more drought tolerant crops. Technology also includes center pivots, which uh, instead of spraying water out into uh, uh, above the, the crops themselves, uh, now have sprinklers that uh, are just a few inches above the ground. I think groundwater banks are going to be a big part of increasing long-term storage, water storage, to carry over from wet periods, water from wet periods to dry periods. People don't have gutters on their houses, on their roofs. Maybe they can install a gutter, very inexpensive, have that gutter direct the water to a tree. And um, it, it's a great use of the rainwater. Instilling the idea of turning off the faucets when you're brushing your teeth. The most important thing I think that that does is to instill a, an ethic of water conservation in the family and in children. It helps them to grow up to appreciate the value of conserving water. Here are a few water conservation strategies that are available today and can be easily employed. Groundwater and rainwater banking, storage, and water reuse. Improved irrigation efficiency for lawns, backyard gardens, and farms. Using low-flow water conservation products and desalination. Even with today's efforts to increase the efficiency of water use, it will be critical for future generations to improve the policies surrounding the management and conservation of one of our planet's most precious natural resources water. For a copy of this scientific study, please visit cast-science.org. This program is made possible in part by DripWorks drip irrigation systems will reduce water use at home and on the farm by up to 50 percent. Become part of the water conservation solution. For a free DripWorks catalog, visit DripWorks.com or call 800-522-3747. Grow smart technology products from Lindsay. Saving growers water, energy, and labor costs with easy-to-use irrigation controls and remote control and monitoring systems for zematic pivots. 
Learn more at growsmart.com. Sky Harvester Water Management Systems. Manufactured by Watertronics, a division of Lindsay, Sky Harvester helps companies reduce potable water needs by up to 80% and qualify for environmental lead credits from the U.S. Green Building Council.